Welcome to the 14th annual Early Mercer Reads event. My name is Isabella Peroni from Mercer County Technical Schools. This event is part of the Mercer County Workforce Development Board and its Literacy Committee. I'm going to read Harold and the Purple Crayon, written by Crockett Johnson, and permission to read from HarperCollins. Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. One evening, after thinking over it for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left a path for a shortcut across a field, and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest, forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a very terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away, his hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly he realized that what was happening, but by the end Harold was over his head in the ocean. He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and he thought a picnics made him hungry. So he laid a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie. There were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see such a delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and deserving porcupine to finish it up. And if he went looking for a hill to climb to see, and he off he went looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that higher, the higher up he went, the further he could see. So he decided to make a hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his room. He was tired and he felt that he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the side, he slipped, and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling into thin air. But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and grabbed onto it. Then he made a basket under the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows and he landed the balloon on the grass in front of the yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He 
made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask the policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then suddenly Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon and it was always right around the moon. Then Harold made his bed. He got in it and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor and Harold dropped off to sleep. The end.